U.S. Bank Stadium here in Minneapolis. Tonight on this fine Thursday night, we've got a good one in store between the Dallas Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Play fake here on first down, surveying the field. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball, and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. Play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And he'll lay out and pull it in. What a diving catch there. Partner, it was quite the battle. Washington and Dallas watching Dez go against Josh Norman. Dez finished with five catches, 72 yards, but a little jawing going back and forth. Tell the truth. When you were watching the game, you started watching the game within the game, didn't you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, 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 you kept your eyes on 88 of Dallas and 24 of Washington and watch what they were doing on each and every snap. And boy, what a battle it was. An absolute fierce one. Dez's team ends up getting the victory. And for Elliott, the Zeke train continues to roll, my friend. 97 more yards, two more touchdowns on Thanksgiving. That's number 10 and 11 now in the season. And I think a lot of people are always looking at rookie players, especially running backs. Will they hit the so-called rookie wall? And Zeke Elliott is showing no signs of that wall being there. But I think it's because of the way they use him and the way he goes about his business. When he doesn't carry the football, he still carries out his play fakes, he still blocks, he does everything in addition to being able to catch the ball. Yeah, if there's a wall, he ran through it. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play, and guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. Third down here for the offense after the incomplete pass. Looking to throw, Prescott. And some space here. And he'll avoid the tackle there with a slide. He gets seven out of it, and he also gets a first. Now the offense lining up first and ten. They stay on the ground, but this time it's Elliott. And he'll get it down inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out-leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. They play fake to Elliott. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Got the hand caught up in the grill of the face mask. 15-yard penalty. So tough for a defender. You're trying so hard to make a play. And the way that these offensive guys can move around, sometimes your hand gets into the wrong place. And here comes play number six on this drive. After the penalty, it's Elliott. A beautiful fake. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball. But when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. Here we go! On second down, Elliott. 
And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. But we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. Play clock hit zero. Don't know what went wrong there, Charles, but it's going to cost some five yards. Has to be some organization from the sideline. Sometimes when you're trying to decide on what play to send in, the play caller has to move a little bit faster. Try to throw now. Prescott throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Terrence Williams that time. And now it's second down. Second down throw for Prescott. That's caught at the three. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that is going to set up third and goal. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And, boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Looking to cash in on this opening drive. Here's third and goal. On third and one, here's Prescott. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. Now Dan Bailey, 30 of 32 in field goal tries last year. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And Bailey able to knock it through. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. And Charles, they get the field goal. Took him a dozen plays, though. Work with me on this one. You know what I'm about to say, right? Bend but don't break. That's what came into play here for the defense. 12 plays were run at them. They only gave up three points. In a lot of ways, that's a win for the defense. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. As Minnesota makes their way back out on the field at 6-5, and five, of course, they started 5-0. and oh. Now, no Stefan Diggs, but AP, as we chronicled earlier, he may be coming back sooner than expected. And that 5-0 and oh start long forgotten now because they are really struggling. Remember, when they were 5-0, and everyone was chasing them in the division. Now it's flipped. They're chasing Detroit, and they've lost two games to Detroit. So it's going to be a long uphill battle. They'll need AP back and a whole lot of help. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Green, blue 45. Back blue now 45. with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. Second quarter begins with the Vikings holding the football, and they've got it here with a first down. The Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, in week 12 last week, more limited production out of the running game. McKinnon, he was the leader, but just nine carries, 31 yards. And I know we immediately look at the guy carrying the ball and say, what is going on? And can Adrian Peterson get back fast enough? And there are rumors that he may be back sooner rather than later. But that offensive line, 
It is a shell of itself from the beginning of the season. So it's not just the guy carrying the ball. It's got to be the guys up front carving holes. Charles, let me ask you about this Dallas defense because so much hype, obviously, and rightfully so about the offense. But this defense, they've held their own, have they not? Indeed they have. And in a lot of cases, they've led the charge on defense, made plays. And let's face it, going into the season, we thought they might finish last in the league in defense. They had a lot of guys suspended. They spent a second-round pick on a defender that we all knew was not going to play this season in Jalen Smith. Yet somehow... They fashioned it together, led by Sean Lee, and become a cohesive unit that doesn't worry about who gets the credit and have had guys emerge and make plays that you didn't expect. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. He hits Beasley right side. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Seven yards to go on second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. It's a six-yard run, leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Third and short yardage, Prescott. He completes it to Bryant. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed, picking up the first. So here we go, first and 10 now. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Prescott on first down. He's got time in the pocket. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Didn't they tell us in our meetings that they needed to account for him on each and every play? You think? A guy of his caliber? So how does a guy like him get that wide open? That usually means there's a tire breakdown on what the coverage was. That everyone thought they were doing something, and they were supposed to be doing something else. But bottom line is, no matter what, you have to know where he is and cover him on every play. Here's Prescott. He's got time. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. A plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Prescott now from the 50. That's caught inside the 20. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15, just shy of the 10. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime.
And here comes play number six on this drive. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. A first down throw for Prescott. That's complete right around the eight. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. It is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Prescott now on second down. And his throw is incomplete. Jason Witten, the intended target. And it's third and short. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. They'll throw again. Prescott. And Dez has got it. Dez Bryant for the Cowboy touchdown. Dez Bryant from four yards out. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. And that'll give them a two-score lead here, but I'm looking ahead. They just want to hold it for the final moments here of the second quarter. They don't want to give up anything on the other side. No, not at all, because if they don't, it almost had the feel of an imposing their will score. And right now, they want to make sure they keep that and tear it into the second half. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. To return, here comes Marcus Sherrills. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Minnesota getting ready to go again on offense. They're 6-5 and five right now, Charles. No Stephon Diggs. We've chronicled AP maybe coming back earlier than people have anticipated, but... We'll see how this offense goes down the stretch because it's been up and down. The problems with the offensive line have extended to everywhere else on the team because they can't run the ball with the same authority. Trying to pass protect for Sam Bradford has been a little bit difficult. You mentioned Stephon Diggs not being out there. We thought Laquan Treadwell would step in for him, the rookie number one pick. Instead, it's been Cordero Patterson they've been trying to get involved in the offense. They've got to find an identity again trying to move the ball. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Second down following the run. Check, check, check. Play. Blue 45. Blue 45. 59. Second down, Bradford. Looking sideline incomplete. Cordero Patterson, the one he was hoping to get it to. And it's third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. So third and seven and an extra defensive back on the field here. Definitely want to play coverage here. On third down, Bradford. And he's able to find Diggs. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. Fresh set of downs here. Play fake here on first down. And it's incomplete. It's a dangerous pass. That's what it was. And it brings up second down. 
Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it. Just move on to the next play. Throwing again, Bradford on second and ten. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30, down to the 25. Now whistles come in, we're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So as they take it over, we step aside. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Cowboys out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? Fielded about a yard deep. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They come out here with a zero on the scoreboard. What was said in that locker room? That's what I want to know. I would love to have been in there because we often have the feeling that there's a lot of shouting, right. screaming, people upset. Hey, 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 left, left, but left, typically, halftime locker rooms are a lot more clinical than that. And in this case... Are they upset that the plays weren't working because of execution? Or did they think just they were just bad plays to call? Yeah. We'll find out pretty quickly here if they feel like they had something going, but they just need to do it a little bit better or not. We'll find out. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Ooh, with a juke. And some room to roam now. A big pick up there on the run. 31 yards. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And he'll get three down of the 34-yard line. The linebacker, Anthony Hitchens, there on the stop. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Now Bradford on second down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. Bradford from the gun on third down. And complete right side to tight end Rudolph. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. Kyle Rudolph doing his job and making another nice catch. Come on, it's the month of December. You knew he was going to be there, right? <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. This drive is turning into an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. Here we go. Here again is McKinnon. 
And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. It'll be a loss of a yard. And just like that, it's third down. Brandon, that play typifies what we've seen from the offense all day long. They've had no success getting things going. I think for the offensive coordinator, he's got to go to that side of the play sheet that says try something different. Try some specials, something they haven't seen all day to try and get this offense kick started. Working out of the gun, Bradford looked under pressure and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. Demarcus Lawrence with a big-time sack on third down and it'll be a loss of seven. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. And Forbath will put this one through, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. to three. So he missed a field goal earlier, but he says not this time, and he's able to knock it through to give his guys three. And that's all you want as a kicker, a chance to redeem yourself. you got to have a short memory if you're going to survive at this level, and he's able to get back on track. Forbath now to kick it away after the main field goal. This will be fielded at the six. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. They'll start the drive with Elliott. Oh, he shifts past him. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a gain of 14 there, and that leads to a Dallas first down. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we've got a guy who's quick and fast, and he used it to great advantage. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And he'll lose yardage here back at the 41. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Cowboys with the football. They'll be looking to tack onto their lead as we get set for the fourth. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this for about four up to the 46-yard line. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. It's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Prescott, it's caught on the right side, Williams. Two yards is all they'll get on the completion. It's fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he gets it away, a directional kick going toward the sideline. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. And now out comes Minnesota. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punk. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> In trouble here, and down he 
goes back at the eight yard line. The corner blitz gets there as he goes down for a loss of seven. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback right in the face of him puts him down. Now a second down throw for Bradford. The left side caught by Diggs. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, there wasn't much there with that hitch route. They didn't gain what they expected. But sometimes when you call a hitch, you really don't have an alternate to go to. You don't have a second route to throw it to. So sometimes you have to rifle in there and hope for the best. Short of the sticks after that completion, and now it's third down for this offense. Third and long for Bradford. Finding time. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. And right now I take my rudimentary kindergarten skills and draw where the tackle box would be because that was close. I thought he was in the tackle box. He has to be very careful where he gets rid of the football from that spot. Yeah, they say there was a receiver in the area, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always a receiver in the area. And taken right at the 35. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. One man in the backfield, Elliott. And they'll get it up the middle. And nowhere really to go there. He'll take this up just shy of midfield. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They go to Elliott again. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards on the pick up there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. are going to stop it here on defense with a timeout. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Out now comes the Cowboys punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. And now out comes Minnesota. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Over the middle, it's complete. And he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. It's a gain of 17 that time. And it'll be first down Vikings. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. Back to throw. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. Give him eight on the play. And it'll be second down. They'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. 
And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. So a second down in completion now brings up third down. He's back to throw. Oh, they would have gotten a conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. One of the best routes, one of the favorite routes of any play caller. He just ran that one. Nice little angle route. That's supposed to be a catch, and usually it is in running back drop. Yeah, I mean, he's a running back, but he's got hands. He should have caught it. Desperation time. Bradford on fourth down. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It's a four-yard pickup. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. They'll put two receivers left, two to the right. Back to throw. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. And he's brought down. And 15 yards here on the catch and run. They're going to hurry back to the line now. He'll look to throw. Surveying the field. Wide open receiver complete. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to Jarek McKinnon there. That'll bring up second down. And there's a good opportunity to just want to ride there. A drop pass. I guess that's why they call them running backs and not catching backs. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. It's a five receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Now Bradford. This will be caught inside the 10. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 to the five-yard line. Critical extra point attempt here. And no sweat. He puts it through, and we are tied here in the fourth. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it up past the 25, 
to the 26-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. They come out here in the eye. They start on the ground with Elliott. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Six yards here to go for the offense on second down. Bryant, the lone receiver left. Here we go. Brian 38. Brian 38. Now Prescott. He's got time in the pocket. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So it all comes... Now hang on here, timeout called, timeout called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So it all comes down to the foot of Dan Bailey. He's hit on his one earlier attempt tonight, but this a little more pressure packed for the win. And his kick is indeed good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost-cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams, and in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street-free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. <laughs> And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Thinking back to 2015, didn't we see Green Bay pull that off yep, twice absolutely. in the season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'd be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. 